Thanks again, everybody, for watching. Please remember to drop a like, subscribe if you're new here, and put a comment below to let me know what you thought of the video. Also, if you are on Twitch and are interested in checking me out there, please feel free to go to my channel and give me a follow at twitch.tv slash banglesdudegaming. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. I will see you in the next video. Hey everybody, Bengals here again with another base building video in Rust. This design that I'm about to show you is something that's a little bit more realistic outside of the crazy base designs I did before that were fun to build but seemed to be a little bit ridiculous and kind of impossible to get if you're in a duo or even maybe a trio server if you don't play a lot. The intent of this design is to fool anybody who's trying to raid you. You know, if you're going to be a duo group or maybe a trio, this is something that you can put up relatively quickly, probably within the first two days if you can get a garage door in a metal embrasure. I always forget the kind it is. But if you get to learn those in the first two days and get an oil refinery, you'll be in good shape. I really wanted to design this base to be safe have something that looks kind of cool, that's out of the ordinary, not your regular design, and kind of keeps everything safe and confuses the raiders if they do try to raid you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the next base building video from Bengals. And I promise, no more trolling, this is all serious. <laughs> Before you actually build a base, you have to ask yourself, what exactly is a base? A base is not a place, but an idea. A state of mind. A living, breathing thing protecting you from outside forces. It's important to build strong, yet practical designs to make it through the wipe. Only after understanding the true meaning of base in Rust, then you are ready to begin. After you've answered all of those questions, navigate to the closest area you would like to build. Remember, Build something close to a fresh water source, as well as trees for farming and getting all of those materials. Also, make sure it's safe of any enemies and... Ooh, I thought I saw a rocket launcher. DON'T TAKE MY ah! ah! IT'S too ah! 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 NO! YOU CAN'T HURT ANYBODY ANYMORE! YOU'RE NOT GONNA TAKE ALL MY money ANYMORE! Welcome to hell. Take me home, country road, to the place I belong, West Virginia, Mountain Mama. Take me home, country roads. Whoa. Wait a second. You're beautiful. I teach my prisoners like they're my dog. All I gotta do to get in the prison is be a bad boy. And this fella over here was a bad boy. Isn't that right? Please help me. Please. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Please. If you are looking to advertise any inmates to get transported to any of these safeguarded high maximum security prisons, 
come down to this prison where this fine warden will take them and do things that I can't describe on camera. Eat the rock. Eat it. No. Our prisoner died. I don't think our company will like this. That's okay. We just won't tell the shareholders. Welcome back to Building with Bengals. I'm your host, Bengals, with another fantastic base build. This design is guaranteed to last you 60 rockets, Tom. Can we can we get that up on the screen? 60 rockets for your TC and your loot. That's 10 more rockets than any other base design you'll see on YouTube. Apologies, everybody. That was my cousin, Bagels. This is now Bengals back to show you another base build. Okay, the first thing we are going to do, find a nice flat spot of land, place down two triangle foundations, each side surrounded by a square foundation, and when you see the mini gap, as you can see in the picture here, put two triangle foundations to fill in the gap. The next thing you're going to do is go on one of the sides of these small triangles and put two triangle foundations off of each square, then put square foundations off the triangles to make a little triangle cubby hole. After you pick the side for your small furnace, go to the opposite side and get ready for the oil refinery. We're going to put five triangle foundations on the right side of the square, with a triangle leading to the left going to another square foundation, which will be where the TC is on. What you'll have to do is, before you put the oil refinery down, make sure on the right side you put the wall there so you don't have any issues while you're placing it. Make sure to place the oil refinery as close to the wall as you can to make sure you don't run into issues on the left hand side when you're trying to seal it in with triangle. After you've placed the oil refinery successfully and everything is good to go, go ahead and fill the rest in on the left side with triangle foundations leading back, and you can put the door frames up as well as the other wall to seal this puppy in. Go ahead and place your tool cupboard, and on the other side of that foundation, go ahead and place another square foundation with both triangles on the left and right side. We'll go ahead and use this for honeycomb later in the design. Okay, now that the back is finished, go back to the triangle foundations you placed and go to the sides that are pointing. What you're going to do on each side, you're going to build a tower formation because eventually this will be a tower leading up a couple of stories and you're going to need five triangle foundations. What you'll notice is the majority of the triangles will place, but when you get to this last one here, you will run into issues. It's because when you put the mini tower formation up earlier, it's blocking it. You know, you had to do it that way to build this up but it's now blocking it. So what you're going to have to do is on these three triangle foundations on the right, you are going to have to shoot them out. Uh-oh, that's embarrassing. And then after you get them shot out, what you wanna do, you wanna make sure all of them are placed in case any of them break, place the triangle foundation in the missing gap, and then fill in this side with square foundation. Make sure you go to the opposite side where this other tower is and place three square foundations there as well. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and place half walls around the entire outline of the base. After you've done all of that, go ahead and upgrade everything to stone. We're gonna go on the outside and right where it kind of bows out here in this little area that I'm jumping around, jump around! What we're going to do is take two triangle foundations, place them there, and then we're going to place a stair going up the foundation steps if you'd like to. So you can have that going up and eventually this is going to be a walkway going into this stuff. The reason why I'm doing this is I'm jumping ahead and that's a bad edit. Ah! What I really wanted you to do is actually go to this side. So you notice this is when the tower starts going out, going around, you know. Hey, it's a tower. Look at me! What you want to do, go here, place a square foundation. Like so. Place a half wall. And you guessed it, one more half wall. And we're going to go ahead and place a floor. Jump up. Nice. Wall, 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 floor, and, because it rhymes, door. Make sure all of this side is facing the right way. It's embarrassing if somebody raids you and they get to the point where they find your stuff and they can literally just chop through your base. This will be your first loot room. So go ahead and do the rest of this, guys. Start from here on this tower. Go all the way to the other side to the small furnace and make sure you have walls on the outside going up. We place the walls all around the side, and like I said, from this tower all the way to the other side where the small furnace is. We're going to go back to the front of the base and finish this. So what you can do on this one here that I'm jumping, just place a regular wall, place a half wall up there, place a triangle floor, place a doorway. We're going to place another doorway. We're going to place a triangle floor above, and we're going to place a half wall there. 
In result, what you'll see, this is the first doorway that you're building to walk inside of this. Here, you can keep this open. If you'd like to put a shotgun trap, you can. If you'd like to move TC up here and be risky, you can as well. You can put a door here for, you know, a bag spawning point, or you can just RP, put a table, put a nice little sign up there, some nice happy trees. Anyway, the last thing you need to do before everything starts going to metal is go here to this open spot and place one more wall, strong side facing out. Beautiful. Focus on the grid from the door going eh, all the way to the other side here. Place half walls on the ground. And I want you to place flooring over to build like your little walkway because our loot room is going to be underground and we're going to have our walkway above. And make sure when you place it, go ahead and upgrade everything at this point to sheet metal. As you can imagine, all of our loot is going to be, eh, maybe this way. What we don't want to do, we don't want to lead the people inside this way because it's giving them a direct path to go inside. Place half walls, upgraded to sheet metal, and place triangle flooring there so if they try to blow through or if they try to blow from the top down, it's going to be very difficult for them to actually get through the stuff. Place door frames everywhere so you're going to have one, two, three, four door frames. Three of them are going to be normal. The fourth one we're actually going to place underneath. So you're going to have to go underneath the floor here, like so. Go down, place that, and you'll be able to do it. Ooh, spooky. One of the designs I did, I actually put our workbench here. We're going to go ahead and do that because, you know, it's really cool. <laughs> much better. Before we actually start building the underground loot room, we're going to continue putting walls up on this floor, setting up the framework. In this little gap, you're going to put a half wall on this layer here from the left here on these two squares. You're going to put half walls, and then you're going to want to put roofs on the very top and then a roof in the middle. So again, if people are going to come from the top, they are going to have to invest a lot more because it's going to be a long way down, boys. Now that we have all of that finished, we're going to finish the garage doors from the square here, going all the way to the left. So we're going to place a total of one, two, and three garage doors, and you guessed it, you're going to have to go underneath the flooring, place the wall frames to make sure that you get that so it covers both the bottom and the top. We're going to go underneath again, place five wall frames because we're going to have five more garage doors protecting this going inside. And we're also going to have our first underground loot room on this side as well as the right side. When you look at it, it should look a little something like this. Before we jump down though, what we can do, we can finish this by putting up the half walls here, half walls here, and then we're going to separate this because the right and the left side are going to have a couple of furnaces, so it's going to be a minor furnace room, and then one of the sides we're going to leave open because we're going to put a ladder that's going to go up to the top of the base. It's going to be the way that you climb the tower, and it's going to be the same design on the other side minus all of these garage doors. just want to take you through to show you what it looks like when you go to the middle where all of the garage doors meet on the right side you can see these two triangles I actually left these open I put some walls above me to have you know just a little bit extra protection on the top you can reserve this area for a repair bench as well as a fridge if you wanted to store your food or have campfires barbecue going back to the other side this is where we're going to have our loot go inside here place a half wall on one of the sides to divide them you can have plenty of loot storage or maybe one box on each side or two boxes
can see how far your loot is separated so you're going to see if they want to get the loot they're going to have to go to a lot of places and they're going to be taking a lot of guesses hoping they can find the loot go ahead and build to RTC place a wall frame up here place a wall to the left place two half walls above place a wall frame going into your oil refinery place the walls on either side of the oil refinery place the door frame to your TC wall it off put the floor above so that nobody can see we're going to fill in this honeycomb now and it's going to be important how we do this. Everything from this square, we are literally going to place walls up and then we're going to place half walls on top of that and seal it in between by putting all of the floors and the walls to make sure it's all covered up in nice and honeycomb. Now here, this is really at your discretion. Like I said at the beginning, the square floor, you can use this as another loot room if you'd like. If you don't feel like you have enough loot storage, for me, I definitely do need a lot of loot, so I'm going to use this one as a loot room. The next thing we're going to do before we build up to the tower, this is for me being paranoid with my base designs, I like to place doors going here with the garage door and you can do that and you can have like a repair bench or a research bench here Then you can just have a regular door going here a regular door going here going up to your ladder just so you have the best protection most confusion when the Raiders are going in trying to get your tasty loot What you want to make sure when you place the garage door here, you want to have that little ridge thing, uh, this little thing, you want to have that facing inside the loot room so you're able to put down your triangle flooring. Okay, back to it. Once all of that's taken care of, just go around and upgrade any remaining thing to sheet metal. On each side of the tower, the design that I'm showing you is the same for each side. Uh, just follow this on one side. You basically put regular walls on the outside triangles. Go ahead and put two doors here. Good side face in the ladder, of course. Put the triangle floors up. And you could put a wall in between this. You can use this whatever you'd like. If you'd like to have this as a spawn point loot room, you can do that. Whatever you want to do. But to get up there, make sure you put another ladder and let's see you on the next level. So far, if we're counting, the level below me is the second floor. Right now, we are currently on the third floor. What you're going to want to do here is the side you're placing the ladder. Make sure you put a wall there so when you're climbing up, you don't get shot immediately. And either on the left part of the triangle or the right part of the triangle, you want to put a door so you can give yourself a little airlock so when you walk up, you're able to walk around freely without getting shot. Put the windows here. Leave them open for now. Above you, go ahead and put the triangle flooring just to make sure you're all covered. And then you want to use the metal vertical embrasures, obviously the side facing out, so then you can have a relatively safe tower up here ready to go. Do that on the other side. You could do any modifications up here if you'd like to do just one of the windows you can. If you want to put more loot boxes, more bags up here, you can as well. After everything is done, you're pretty much done with the build outside of decorating. So guys, hopefully you really enjoyed the base. To actually build it, it's going to cost you approximately 37,000 metal frags, 13,694 wood, as well as 27,030 stone. Now I know what you're thinking, it's going to be a lot to build it, you know, it's like, what the heck, this is too much to build, but honestly if you think about it, if you have two people that are pretty good playing together as a duo, or if you have a trio, and you also do the strat of going to the outpost and getting the jackhammer and a chainsaw, it really isn't all that bad.